welcome back to Food Prep Guide. We're out in the garden today at one of my tea garden areas. And I wanted to show you one of the new to me plant varieties that I grew this year that I am pretty excited about. This video is for you if you have been considering growing plants for their medicinal properties and trying to expand from maybe just herbs or vegetables um, or even flowers and wanting to expand into things that could be used as medicine if needed. Now I'm not going to be going into all the different um, medicinal type properties that this herb type has because I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist, so I'm not going to go into all of those details, but I am going to tell you specifically why I picked this herb for oral health and how I'm going to be preserving it for use throughout the year. Let's get started. Welcome to Food Prep Guide. My name is Jordan. I'm a homeschooling mom to three, living on three beautiful acres with my wonderful husband. A health crisis forced our family to change the way we think about food. Unfortunately, it also put us in financial hardship. Thankfully, the solution to both challenges was the same, to live off the land as much as possible. For us, that means growing a garden, preserving the harvest, raising chickens, and cooking from scratch. It's definitely a family affair. And friends, too. Meet Stacy, researcher, author, and lifelong learner she entered the world of food preservation in the crazy days of 2020. She joined a gleaning co-op and the local grocer offered her clearance produce in bulk. And so the adventure began. Together, we're reclaiming the old ways of food stewardship and teaching them to the next generation. If there's one thing you should know about us, it's that we love Jesus and seek to steward his blessings wisely. Our table always has room for one more. So y'all come join us. Okay, so what we have here is known as the toothache plant, an aptly named plant, and you can probably guess what it's used for. Um, but this is the flower buds of the toothache plant. You can see they come in two different varieties. One is just the yellow head like this, and then they have another one called a bullseye, where it's yellow on the outside, but then like a deep kind of burgundy color on the inside. Um, and what it does is it has numbing abilities. When you bite into the flower, it numbs that part of your mouth wherever you bite and chew. Now it's not meant to be like chewed and swallowed and, and, and eaten like that. It's just for topical numbing. Um, and when I was researching this plant, I wanted to know if I dehydrate it, will it retain those numbing properties? And every source that I have tried to study from, everything said yes it does. Um, I didn't want to grow this plant if it was only useful in its fresh stage because that's just such a short-lived period of time um, that, that just didn't seem worth it to me but thankfully um, they do retain their numbing abilities when they are dried so we're going to harvest and then take these inside and show you how we're going to preserve them th for use throughout the year and what I plan on doing is I'm just going to be cutting the buds when we get inside I'll show you all more of this in detail but I'm just going to cut the stem off like that um, and put them on the dehydrator trays like that. And when someone has a toothache or a mouth ulcer or they just um, like ate a chip and it kind of cut the inside of their cheek or something like that, I'll pull one of these out um, and they can chew on that and it'll kind of numb it up. Now, I have not tested the numbing qualities of this plant, so I'm gonna do that with you on camera um, and kind of give you a, a play by play of what I'm feeling and how it's like. And I will be harvesting this as we go. And we'll just kind of chat, chat about how it goes. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm just going to kind of chew on the flower head, like right on this corner over here. Mmm. Mmm. So strong. The flavor, not the numbing yet. It hadn't kicked in. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to talk. I'm gonna drool. <laughs> and he's causing me to drool like it's just numbing big time. And it's so strong. 
I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm having to kind of spit a little bit because I'm. it's literally causing me to produce so much saliva right now. I don't know if my kids are going to be able to to use this. Oh. <laughs> um, but adults definitely would be able to. Okay, so one of its other nicknames is called Buzz Buttons. Oh. <laughs> And I understand why now. <laughs> it's called buzz buttons because my mouth is literally buzzing right now. It almost feels like it almost feels like this area of my mouth has been shocked a little bit. Not painful at all. It's not painful at all. But it's just like I can't feel this area right now. But I can feel like this constant buzzing sensation. Wow, that really caught me by surprise. Okay, I hope I'm going to be able to talk. I'm still, I'm producing so much saliva still. Buzz buttons, that is a perfect nickname for this plan. <laughs> but it works, it's numbing. That part right here, and uh, tongue right here. I mean, it's almost kind of hard to talk because... It feels so weird right here. And I think if I did have a toothache, I think it would really help kind of mask that tooth pain. Interesting. Wow. Very interesting. Okay. I'm going to try to talk. <laughs> Y'all, but I'm so sorry. I might have to lean over and get this drool, this drool out. <laughs> um, but the reason why I'm harvesting right now is because we are in a severe drought right now. And this plant is not doing well at all. And I don't want to waste all of these beautiful buds. Um, I don't know if you can see really good, but the plant is loaded with them. Wow. Plant's loaded with them. <laughs> I'm not drooling, Emma. <laughs> anyway, I don't want them to be wasted, number one. But number two, I have read, this is my first year, like I said, so I don't have personal experience with this, but I have read... Um, that it's it's like other plants where when you harvest the flowers, it just encourages the plant to produce more. That's 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 just par for the course with almost anything we grow in the garden. When you continuing to harvest, it encourages the plant. To, it has more energy to put into new buds, new new plants, new flowers, and that's supposedly what happens with this plant too. So by take, taking all of these buds, I'm hoping to kind of reduce the energy load that this plant needs to put out right now during this drought, but also give it some more energy to produce more buds. So like I said, I don't know that my children would be able to use this. It was such a strong, such a strong sensation. But if dehydrating these is like other dehydrated foods, while dehydrating does preserve a lot of the nutrients and a lot of the flavor, it is muted. It mutes the flavor of whatever you're dehydrating. Like, you know, like carrots. I'm dehydrating carrots. It's not like biting into a, a fresh, juicy, sweet carrot. You have a little bit, you still have that carrot flavor. It still tastes like a carrot. You still know it's a carrot, but the flavor is just muted. And so I'm thinking, I'm just assuming that that's what will happen when I dehydrate these. And that might actually work in my favor because it'll make it easier to take. It'll make it easier to chew on when someone has a toothache or a mouth, ul mouth ulcer or something. That's what I'm hoping will happen at least. Okay, I'm going to leave the rest of the plant to grow. Now this is, um, it's a perennial in some areas, um, in tropical areas mostly. Uh, I feel like our weather is getting more and more tropical, but technically we're not in a tropical environment. So I don't know that this is going to continue to grow back year after year, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to treat it like a perennial and I'm going to see what happens. Um, in a few weeks when it gets real cool around here, I'm going to go ahead and cut all of this plant back to where it's just a nub about that high. And then when, before we get like a first frost or it's going to be freezing temperatures, I'm just going to put, tuck a little frost cover over that little nub. 
and I'm going to see if I can get it to survive throughout the winter because that would be awesome to not have to start this again because it was such a slow starter. I, in fact, I didn't think that this plant was going to grow until about three months after I planted the seed. That's the first time that I saw a sprig of growth and I actually thought it was a weed and I almost pulled it and I thought, you know what, that's the area that I planted those toothache plants. I'm just going to leave them. <laughs> I'm just going to leave. The effect is starting to wear off now. I just noticed that the effect is starting to, I'm starting to be able to feel that area of my mouth now. And I'm not drooling near as badly. <laughs> um, but anyway, I thought it was a weed and I was going to pull it and I decided not to, to see what would happen. And lo and behold, it was a toothache plant, but it took three months for it to break the soil. Um, and I don't know if that's typical of this plant or if it was just because of my growing conditions at the time. That's it. But anyway, it's a fun plant if you want to try it and it's not just a great thing to have in our arsenal of um, treating things at home whenever possible. So I'm going to head inside and dehydrate these. We'll take you through that process um, and we'll see you inside. Okay, here we are. I am not going to be washing these. You certainly can if you want to. Uh, we don't spray anything on these plants. Nothing gets... Um, you know, not even anything natural, like nothing gets sprayed on these particular plants. And I try to try to keep that. That's like as my general rule of thumb for all medicinal plants, even if it's natural and, you know, not harmful. I still just don't spray anything on my any plant that I'm going to be using medicinally. So basically what I'm just doing is cutting off the little stems here so that I'm just left with a tiny little bud. And we're not going to have to worry about spreading these out evenly on the tray like I normally would because I don't have a ton. So it's gonna don't have to worry about airflow on this batch. But if for whatever reason you had a whole lot of these, you would want to pay attention to airflow and make sure that they're not touching each other or overlapping. And then I'm gonna dehydrate these in my Excalibur dehydrator at about 115 degrees. When I'm doing medicinal herbs that are leafy in nature, I dehydrate at 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but for these, you see how thick they are? You know, it's obviously not a leaf. They're pretty thick. So I do feel like I need to go a little bit higher on the temperature. But I don't want to go too high because I want to retain as much of those, as much of that numbing property as possible. Did I get them all? Yes, I got them all. Okay. And I feel like if I dehydrate at too high of a temperature, I probably will lose some of that numbing ability and that's the whole point of dehydrating these is to keep that numbing effect oh I got a couple more in here let's see okay looks like that's it tiny little batch but that's okay just one little flower anytime someone has a toothache so even though it's just a tiny little batch we shouldn't need these too often because we don't really have that issue too often I'm going to put these in my dehydrator 115 degrees Fahrenheit and I will show you what they look like when they're done. Okay, I ended up letting these go for about 12 hours. This is my first time doing these, so I went a little bit longer than I thought I might need to because some of these blossoms are very large. Um, and I don't, I normally crumple it to show you that there's no moisture and to show you how easily it powders, but I don't want to do that because that will mess up. Um, the numbing qualities of that bud so just know that you need to go until they're completely dry and you might even want to add a little bit more time than normal just for the nature of what it is and how how much moisture can get trapped in all those tiny little tiny little buds I am going to vacuum seal these to make them last as long as possible this is a perfect time to go ahead and reuse the lid you can absolutely reuse canning lids when you are dehydrating and I'm going to go ahead and vacuum seal using my little brake bleeder pump right here. In case anyone's never seen this, it's a great way to manually and quickly vacuum seal your mason jars without having to log out or lug out your big vacuum sealer. As you can see, it is vacuum sealed. I will store these out of light behind closed doors or some dark out curtains to keep these fresh um, for as long as possible. I hope this video was helpful to y'all and we will see you next time. Bye!